it's April, which means it's time for the next installment in our 2021 Mighty Mile a Minute Calendar Blanket. And this month we are going to learn the V and Fan Stitch pattern. This is actually the narrow strip version of the first ever baby blanket pattern we made a tutorial for here on the channel. It's a classic and it's beautiful and I love the way it looks climbing up alongside the offset shell stitch pattern from last month. You want to make sure you've got the same hook and the same kind of yarn that you've been using all along for this pattern, but you can use whatever colors you want. And remember, these stitch patterns are all a little different. Some of them are going to size up, some of them are going to size down. As long as you have the correct number of rows, when you do the join as you go border pattern, as we connect all of our strips together, it will either stretch or shrink your strip to match up with its neighbors. So don't stress it too much. That said, if you feel that your tension or your, your stitches are really, really tight, you can go up a hook size and that will loosen things up. You feel that your tension or your stitches are really, really loose, and you can go down a hook size, and that will help tighten things up. That is an easy way to play with gauge, and it's um, not something you really need to worry about because at the end of the project, we are going to block the blanket, and that will ease up on everything. So I do recommend you stick to the same hook. Make sure you've got the same number of rows in every single strip, and it'll work out, I promise. All right, so let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch it up together easily find all of our crochet tutorials. Type youtube.com slash jada and stitches into your web browser and we'll see you there. For the April strip of our blanket, you want two different colors, about 80 to 90 yards of each. I'm using a size for medium weight acrylic. I've got 80 to 90 yards of color A for the inside of the strip, that'll be the stitch pattern, and about 80 to 90 yards of color B, which will be the join as you go shell stitch border. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and the same hook you used last time. I've got a 5.5 millimeter here. It's also known as an I or a 9 in the US, a 5 in the UK. But of course, if you feel your tension is tight, you can go up a hook size. If you feel your tension is loose, you can go down a hook size. So playing with tension is perfectly fine here. And of course, you want your blanket because we are going to attach this strip as we go. Once you've got all that together, we can get started. To begin, we're going to start with a slip knot. And we're going to chain 12. Once we have 12 chains, we're going to skip the first four and find the fifth chain. And we're going to work a V stitch into it. So make sure you've got the fifth chain. And for the purpose of this pattern, a V stitch is double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So double crochet, chain one, and double crochet all worked into the same chain. And that is a little V-stitch. That's motif number one. Motif number two is a fan, so we're going to skip three chains. And into the fourth chain, we're going to work five double crochet. So five double crochet is a fan for this pattern. Five double crochet all worked into the same stitch, or in this case a chain equals a fan. You can see that nice fanning out sort of thing that does. Those are the two motifs in every single row. To finish a row, we're going to skip over those two chains, find the last chain, and double crochet into it. And that is the first row. So it's the exact same pattern every single row, but because we're going back and forth, you're always going to have a reverse. You're always going to have a V-stitch sitting in the top middle of a fan and a fan sitting in the middle of a V-stitch. And of course, every row has a little post on either end. It's harder to see on the first row, but that's where we're at right now. Let's chain three in turn. Every row begins with a chain three. That counts as a double crochet. Turn over your work. You're going to find the middle top stitch of that fan. And if it's easier to count, so that's the top of your double crochet, you count two more, so one, two, three, and into the fourth stitch. But it should be, if you pull it apart, one, two, three, four, five, you're looking for that middle stitch. 
and after you work a few of these it's going to become much more obvious. So into the middle stitch of that fan from the previous row we're going to work a v-stitch. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Like I said you can count to it, you can pull apart the fan and count so until you find the middle one, or you can just eyeball it because that middle stitch will always sit a little bit higher in the middle than everything else. V-stitch in the middle of the fan. Then you jump over to the middle of the V-stitch from the previous row, that little chain one space that you can stick your finger through. So if you're confused, just pull it apart. There's the space between the fan and the V-stitch. That's the end of the row, so here's the middle. And you're going to work five double crochet into the middle of that V-stitch. Five double crochet worked into the v-stitch. Then you're going to double crochet into the top of the turning chains. So skip that top of that double crochet, that's the other side of your v-stitch, grab your chains and sometimes it helps to roll them towards you. You can sort of see the top of them there. You just want to double crochet into the top of the turning chains. So this is what we've got so far. You've got a post, oops, a post on either end, so whether it's chains or double crochet, chains or double crochet. You've got a, a v-stitch and a fan in every row, and because we're going back and forth, it's always going to reverse. The v-stitch will always be sitting on top of a fan, and the fan will always be sitting in the middle of a v-stitch, even though the pattern itself doesn't change. So v-stitch, fan, v-stitch, fan, you're doing the same thing every row, but because you're going back and forth, it's always going to wind up in the middle of the other motif. So it's going to look kind of neat. Let's do another one together. Chain three to begin. Every row begins with chain three. It counts as the double crochet. Turn your work. Of course, the first thing we see is the fan stitch from the previous row. So you find that middle stitch and work a v-stitch into it. So every row begins with chain three. Then you move to a v-stitch, which will always be in the middle of a fan from the previous row. Then you work a fan, which will always be worked into the middle of the v-stitch from the previous row. Five double crochet. Five double crochet. Then you're going to find the top of the turning chain. So your chains will probably pull in. You see what they're doing here? So if you get confused, just stop, reorient yourself. You've done five double crochet into the middle of that V-stitch, which means that the chains right next to it must be where you need to work your double crochet. So right into the top of those turning chains from the previous row. And that little post will sit pretty close to the side of your, your big fan there, but don't worry about it. And here's three rows now, so you can always stop and kind of pull out your corners, and you can see that cute little pattern starting. We'll do one more row together, chain three to begin, turn your work. The first thing you're looking at is that fan from the previous row. You want to work a v-stitch into the top middle stitch of it. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet, that's your v-stitch. V-stitch always starts the row. The only other motif is the fan. The fan always gets worked into the middle of a v-stitch. Five double crochets right into that space there. There's the five double crochet fan motif, and then the next thing you want to do is end the row with a double crochet in the top of the turning chains. The turning chains might lean in, so just grab them, spin them, just make sure you're not using the top of the stitch. You want the chain right next door. Double crochet right into the top of those chains. And there you go. There's four rows in total. We're doing 78 rows all together of this stitch. 
Remember, it's chain three to begin, V-stitch first, then the five fan, five double crochet fan into the middle of the V-stitch in the previous row. Finish it with a double crochet in the top of the turning chain. So it's the same pattern every single row, but because you're always turning, it's always going to be put right in the right spot, I guess is, is how I could say it. <laughs> V-stitch fan, V-stitch fan, always in that order. And it's always going to reverse on you for every row. That's what it's gonna look like. You want 78 rows in total. Remember, this will be a little bit shorter than your neighbor. Uh, so if you hold this strip up against your blanket, it's gonna look shorter, but that's perfectly fine. Once we do the join as you go border, it will stretch out the actual stitch pattern so that it matches up with the border of the neighbor. So don't be stressed out by that. But like I said, if you feel that your tension is super tight and for some reason you're just making this really, really small, feel free to go up a hook size. It's not gonna damage it. And um, you can switch back to the original hook size when you do your border. And uh, that's fine. Playing with tension is perfectly okay in this project. So I'm gonna turn you loose. We've done four rows already. You want 78 rows in total. Chain three to begin. Turn, V-stitch in the middle of the fan, fan in the middle of the V-stitch, double crochet into the top of the turning chains. And that's all you're gonna do for 78 rows in total. I've completed 78 rows of our little V's and fan stitches and every 10 rows I put a little marker just to make it easier for me to count um, and of course it is easy to count you count a fan a V a fan a V so row 1 row 2 row 3 row 4 row 5 row 6 row 7 row 8 row 9 10 and I put a marker and so on all the way up to row 78 we don't have a finishing row for this particular pattern, unlike some of the other ones. So once you get to row 78, that is it. You can snip your yarn, fasten off, weave in your ends, and if you're using little counting stitch markers like me, you can take them off. Grab your border color and we'll uh, start adding the border to our strip and joining it to our blanket. So make sure you get your blanket too. We're gonna to take our border color and we're gonna start with a slip knot on our hook. And there really is no right or wrong side to your strip. I'm going to work from the point of view of my last motif being a fan and being finished. So the last row, the last thing I did was a fan. That's on the left side and this is how I'm going to look at this strip. But because you work back and forth, it doesn't really matter which side you use. So you can use whichever side you think looks nicest. But here's where I'm starting. We're going to concern ourselves with three main spaces across the top and the bottom. So the first space is the space between the post and our V-stitch. The next space is between motifs, so the space between the V-stitch and the fan. And the third space is between the fan and the post at the edge of that row. We're going to join our yarn with a slip stitch in that space, and we're using the shell stitch uh, the very simple shell stitch for the border. So we're going to chain three to begin. That counts as a double crochet. Two more double crochet into the same space. And we'll concern ourselves with finishing off this corner when we get all the way back around to it. So just three double crochet or your first shell to start. I'm going to weave in my little short tails later. So I'm going to put that to the back. We're not chaining in between shells when we work across a straight edge. So you just jump to the next space. Here it is here between motifs. Three double crochet right into that space. Just ignore your little tails if it's trying to get up and in the way there. Three double crochet equals one shell. The next space is between the fan and the post. We're gonna have three double crochet right into that space. And that will be the top of our strip completed. There are only four corners on a strip. There's this corner and this corner and then two at the bottom. And to create a corner, we're gonna chain two. And before we leave that space, we're gonna work another three double crochet into it. But because we want to start joining as we go along the left side of our strip, if you're working left-handed, this will probably be the opposite side. Um, but you can decide how you want to do that. <laughs> There's no right or wrong way to join your strips either. We're going to chain one to start our corner, but before we finish it, we're going to make sure that we have our other blanket here. We're joining to the march strip. So the march strip 
it's this side that we're joining to, so I know this is the top of the blanket because it's the mark strip I want to join to. You find that top corner space, and this is where we're going to do the first join of our blanket. So hook back in. We've already chained one to start our little corner. I'm going to slip my hook right through that corner space on the march strip. Just a simple little slip stitch, nothing fancy, not too tight, not too loose. And then before I do anything else, I chain one to complete that corner space. And I want to work three double crochet into the same space as my other shell. So just ignoring the blanket for the first little bit here. Three double crochet right around that post. And that completes the corner. I'm going to pull my hook up and out of the way so you can see what I've done. So we've come across the top of our strip. We started our corner, which is on typically shell, chain two shell, all worked into the same place, but we've joined it to the adjacent corner space on our march strip, and that has started our join as you go. Working down the side of our strip to join as you go is just like every other strip we've done so far. So I'm going to put my hook back in my loop here. After you finish working three double crochet around the post along the edge of all 78 rows, so sometimes the post, if it's on a fan row, it's close to the fan. Sometimes it's easy to see when it's next to a V-stitch, so make sure you don't skip any. You work three double crochet around that edge, around the post at the edge of that row, and before you continue, you look at your blanket, you count down three double crochet, and that space between shells should be right there, right where your hook wants to lie. And you just slip stitch, nice and simple, not too tight. Then you look for the next row edge. Here it is here, easy to see because it was a V-stitch on the end. Double crochet three times around that post. And before you move on, look back at your blanket, skip down to the space between shells on the other side, slip your hook in there, and slip stitch. Nice and simple. Of course, working flat on a surface will help, especially with the blanket getting bigger and bigger because it's going to get weightier and weightier. Doesn't that look nice? I just love this. Let's do another one together. Next row post is smushed up against the fan stitch, so don't miss it. Three double crochet around that post. Remember, we're going to block our blanket at the end of the entire project too, so if you've got some tight places or some loose places, all of that will sort itself out when we block it. There's three double crochet. I look back at my other blanket. There's the next space and slip stitch. Easy peasy. So this is why you want to have the right number of rows in every strip that you do. So 78 rows is what we're doing. If you're changing it up a little bit, remember that you've got to make note of that as you go because the number of rows corresponds to the number of shells at the edge of each row and that's how we know the join as you go is going to work out properly. So you can just work all the way down the edge of your April strip, making sure that you slip stitch in between shells on the adjacent strip. Every time you finish three double crochets, reach across to your blanket, find the next space, and slip stitch. And I'll catch up with you down at the bottom. Once you've worked all the way down the edge of your April strip, you'll notice that your strip has stretched out a little bit to match up with the other side. And of course, we are it will continue to stretch out as we do the other side. So that's the magic of this join as you go. And if you feel like some of your stitches feel a little bit bunchy or whatever, don't worry about it. We haven't blocked the blanket yet. And blocking is a really important process when you're knitting and crocheting things because it helps all of your stitches loosen up, lay flat. It'll just generally look its best once it's blocked, but we're going to do that way at the end, so don't worry about tight stitches or bunching shells or anything like that right now. 
What you do want to concern yourself with is making sure that you have slip stitched in between each set of three double crochet all the way down. At the bottom, we're going to do just like we did at the top. We've got three main spaces to concern ourselves with. We're going to start the last shell along the side of our April strip, three double crochet, And because we're creating a corner down here, we're going to chain one to start the corner. There's our last join. It's the corner space at the bottom of the March strip. So I'm going to slip stitch into that. Chain one to continue turning the corner. And now we're going to finish three double crochet shell in this space, a three double crochet shell in the middle bottom space, and then three double crochets on the other side. So let's finish off that corner. We have now completely joined our April strip to our March strip. So that part is now out of the way. It's smooth sailing from here on out. So there's our corner finished. And you see how nice and neatly that joins to the other side. Here's the middle space right between motifs. We're going to work three double crochet into that, working across the bottom of the April strip. that one done. Here's the other space on the other corner and we work the last shell across the bottom of our April strip. So three double crochet and we want to turn a corner now. So two chains, we're not joining to anything because we've already done that part. And now we just want to work a shell, three double crochet in every single space at the edge of every single row all the way up. So we're mirroring what we did on the other side. You don't want to miss your little spaces. So I'm going to finish off that corner with three double crochet. So shell, chain two shell in the corner. There it is there. That's the bottom complete and it matches up with the bottoms of all of our other strips so far. And now all we need to do is just work three double crochet shells into the edge of every row all the way up the other side. So just like on the other side, some of them will be easy to see because they're sitting next to a V-stitch. Some of them won't be so easy to see because they're sitting next to a fan. So for example, here's a fan. I have to dig to find that post and that space. Make sure you don't miss it. There'll be 78 rows. So you need to do this 78 times all the way up and I will catch up with you at the top. Once you've worked three double crochet into the edge of every row going up the other side, we finish off by working three double crochet into the last space, which is the same space that we began in. So there's our last shell and of course we want to turn the corner. So chain two and that turns the corner and allows us to join with a slip stitch to the top of our little chain three that began the entire row and of course that's the edge of that first shell. So there's the corner and now we're all joined all the way across the top. This is starting to look like a garden. We're all joined up all the way down the side and like I said, once we block this, all oh, the little bubbly bits will loosen up and the whole thing will look nice and lacy. You can fasten off. So trim your yarn, pull that tail through there and take a moment to weave in both of your yarn tails. You probably still have two of them. And of course, you can always stretch it out, use the heat of your hand, just kind of flatten things out a little bit and that will definitely give you a much better idea of how things are going to look once we're all done. And there you go, that's April. We are four months in. That's just over one quarter of the year done already, holy smokes. We hope you enjoyed making this up along with us this week. I think this almost might be a pretty wrap. I've got so many ideas for these stitch strips. I barely know where to start. <laughs> anyway.
anyway, we will see you soon here on the Jada and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a great week. Bye, everyone. Hi, everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.